In today's video, I wanted to go over database backup concepts and strategies. So the first thing I wanted to, to discuss was the importance of backing up your database multiple ways. The more the better. So the first type of backup and the most important type of backup is your native server level, database server level backup. So you're issuing, in most cases, like a backup database command. Or in Oracle, you're using a utility called RMAN that, that achieves these types of backups. And these types, these are the most comprehensive types of backups that allow you, in most cases, to restore to a point in time because they're, they're not only including the files, but they're also including streaming transactions that are going into your database. The next type of backup that I wanted to go over are dumps. So dumps are you know, using a, some sort of a utility. In Oracle, you're using the export utility or the data pump utility. In MySQL, you're using MySQL dump. In SQL Server, you're using something called BCP or bulk, co bulk copy program. And all these uh, utilities do is dump your database, or you could even be more granular and export at the table level and take that data, in most cases, put it out into a text format, into a file that you can later use to import. And again, this is just a snapshot of one point in time. You can't, you can't restore to multiple points in time with a dump. And then the last uh, type of backup I'd like to discuss is uh, snapshots. And this is something that is, has been enabled by virtual machine technology where you could actually just take a, a like a snapshot of a disk that you could later use to restore and the operating system has functionality that allows the uh the, the saving of these files at a at a snapshot in time that allows you to restore to that point in time so what's happening is they're they basically quiesce the, the activity on the disk while the snapshot is running and they keep a log somewhere else. And then when the, the snapshot is done, then they apply the pending changes to those files. Next, I wanna talk about offline versus online backups. So offline backups are not very common these days. They require you to have to be able to shut down your database so that you can perform your backup. So basically it's very simple. You just basically shut down your database and then all databases are just a collection of files. So you just locate all the files and you copy them somewhere and then you bring the database back online. You know, and you're gonna need a maintenance window for this and it's gonna be, the amount of time is gonna be proportional to the size of the files that are involved. Then the other type is online, which is definitely the most popular and it can be done while the database is up online and in use. And the database has facilities for basically journaling what's going on while you're doing your backup and it keeps everything in a consistent state. All right, so we'll circle back to the, you know, the basic uh, backup database command that comes with, with your database. And normally databases have def different levels of, of backups that they support. So full, obviously that's gonna be a full backup of your entire database, to be able to restore that database using that full backup. But there's also a couple of other uh, incrementals that are built on top of the full, which is a differential. So basically a differential backup is gonna be all the activity that has occurred on your database since you've done your last full backup. And then you've got transactional log backups. And in this case, you're backing up the transaction log of your database. And these usually stream. So your transaction log is gonna keep all the transactions that are going on in your database. And then what you can do is when those transactions have been committed, you can back up those transactions and then remove them from your transaction log. So what this allows you to do is, is, it, is restore to a point in time. So if you did your backup, your full backup, for example, on Sunday, and then you're doing a differential backup on every day of the week, and then transactional log backups, let's say once an hour. And let's say it's Wednesday at 3 a.m. And so you've done your full backup on Sunday. You've done your differential backup at midnight on Wednesday. And then you've done three transaction log backups on Wednesday to, to, to that point in time. So that would allow you to restore to that point in time, 3 a.m. on Wednesday. And you could do transaction log backups as often as you want. You can run them every 15 minutes, every one minute, whatever your recovery interval requirement is. So that's, 
that's the different types of backups that are supported. And it's really common to mix all three types in your overall backup implementation. So something very important for you to think about with your backup strategy is frequency. You know, how often do you need to be backing up your database? You know, and, and how, how frequent do you need to do each type of, of, uh, of backup, full, differential, and transactional? And this is, believe it or not, this is a business requirement. You need to go back to your business and ask them what level of recovery is really required in your system. And then you can build your strategy around that. And frequency, as I said, needs to be applied to each type of backup, the full, the differential, and the transaction log. And you need to be very aware of this frequency so that you know what your capabilities are in terms of restoring your database. Next, I wanna talk about backup location. So backups should definitely be directed to a location that is separate from all your database files. You don't want to be ha you don't want to have your backups sitting on the same drive next to the database files that it's supposed to be protecting. Because what happens is if you lose that drive, you're going to lose not only your files in your database, you're going to lose your backup. So you have to have someplace else that you're directing these backups to. And preferably that's going to be located on a completely separate server or you can mount a drive from another server onto your server and do the backups there. And if you're in the cloud, there's, there's a lot of new options that are available to you. In AWS, they have something called the storage gateway where you present the volume to your server, which actually that the, the drives are actually housed on some other server in AWS, but your server sees them just like any other server. It's, or if it, it can be a UNC uh, directive that you can direct your, your backup to. And then another option in uh, AWS is uh, using S3. So you can have, you can basically do your backups and put them onto a local drive and then copy them over into S3 and then use all the capabilities of S3 with the cheap storage and the life cycles and everything that goes around that in order to implement your backup strategy and keep as much retention as required in your system. We talked about retention. So again, retention is a business requirement. You need to go back to your business. You need to ask them, how far back do we need to be able to restore our databases to? Is that last week? Is that for a month ago? Is that for three months ago? Is that for a year ago? It all depends on what the business decides on what is that requirement because there are a lot of costs associated with keeping these backups around for you know if it's a long period of time could be a lot of storage costs and your backup implementation needs to enforce that retention policy so whatever you decide on you need to build into your backup implementation and the backup implementation needs to remove those unneeded files after you're past your retention interval and last, and maybe the most important of all, restores need to be practiced. So you should be restoring your databases on a regular basis um, because practice definitely makes perfect and practice uncovers issues that you may not find otherwise. Uh, so in a lot of environments I'm, you know, that, I'm, that I support, the, uh, the development teams usually want to have data in their you know, non-production environments. And that's a great way to practice your restores. So you're going to have your production database. You would do your, your backup of the pro production database, and then you're going to take that, that backup and you're going to restore it to your staging or your QA or your test or your development environment. And in some cases, you may need to obfuscate that data because you may not want to have you know, real customer names uh, available to your developers. So you might have to you know, go in and scramble the names or something like that. But you're still restoring your backup in order to achieve that. So that's a great way to uh, practice your restores. For today's video, I really appreciate it. If, you'd, uh, if you learned something, press the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. You know, a lot of the people watching my videos are not subscribers and I could sure, uh, I would sure appreciate some more subscribers to the channel. If you have questions, hey, send them to me, drop them below and I'll be glad to make a video for you. Thanks guys.